Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John in the Wilderness. It's uh, really, um, it's really powerful and special to see all of you here um, to gather as a church today. So thank you for being here uh, and to be able to gather after this uh, this terrible storm that we've been through with Hurricane Helene. Um, I think it, it goes without saying uh, that what's most important in life um, are the people that you get to go through it with, and uh, in our case, that's that's you all, that's each other. Um, and so, you know, while not everybody's here today, it's really uh, I'm really touched by this chance that we we can gather and worship and, and to provide a little bit of support to one another. Um, so, thank you all for being here as we try to. Uh, step into this moment together as the body of Christ and think about uh, what we've been through uh, and what God is calling us to next. Um, I'd like to invite a member of the vestry up, uh, Jill Owen, who's going to give you a little update on just how things are going with the church, um, you know, what we've, we've been through in terms of our, our community and our staff and our property and so forth, and then we'll begin worship um, after that, okay? Jill? never get this vantage point. Good morning to each of you. It's wonderful that we're able to be gathered here today. We praise God even though even through the storm as he is the light in the darkness. A couple weeks ago Father Josh had asked me to speak to the congregation about my faith and what St. John in the wilderness means to me through a stewardship talk. However, Helene, a name we won't soon forget, has disrupted lives and plans throughout its path. So instead, I'm here today to update you on behalf of the vestry. If you are in need, or if you have a neighbor who is struggling, please contact Deacon Sandy. The staff of the church is accounted for, and many of them are here today. They, and many of us, have gone through very challenging situations, including having to evacuate to survive, seeing their neighbors or family members' homes damaged or destroyed, or experienced mudslides, downed trees, and power lines in their neighborhoods. Father Josh has been in touch with them and has already provided them some financial resources. They may need extra time and understanding in the weeks ahead to deal with recovery for their homes, families, and personal well-being. The church sustained some damage from the storm due to downed trees. Father Josh sent out an email with some photos on Saturday of the damage. Due to a tremendous, and it was also on Facebook I saw. Due to a tremendous effort by our staff, the property is now cleared and safe. We will file an insurance claim and work towards repairing the property. We still have an issue with the septic pump in the new parish hall, so avoid using those bathrooms if you can, but they are currently working and shouldn't be stressed too much. We do have power and running water, so if you need to fill up here, the office will be open this week with regular hours. We have one washer and dryer in the parish hall, which you are welcome to use, and you can charge electronics here also. Father Josh has begun transferring money to people who lost their homes or experienced loss and damage in the local community, including three families he knows. One who had to evacuate, another who had to be airlifted out, and another whose home flooded to the roof. He will share more about what's ahead in his sermon. In closing, I would like to echo much of what we all say and know about our little church on the hill. Our clergy should be recognized for their day-to-day -day efforts and energy to provide such an amazing place to worship and connect, as well as the staff and those who dedicate their own time to make all things beautiful here. Personally, my faith has become stronger through all of you and this church, and I thank you for that. Please continue to stay safe, and God bless. Thank you, Jill. Um, we are doing things a little bit differently today as a lot of uh, communications have been down, so we don't have bulletins as you figured out by now, um, but the hymns are up here on this board. Uh, so uh, you'll be able to follow through that way, and, and Father Ian or I will announce the hymns also uh, as a reminder uh, to you beforehand. Uh, please, uh, you should be able to use your hymnals, and you can share them with your neighbors um, as, as well. Um, so to that end, um, it's 
so wonderful to see you all again. Uh, and why don't we stand as we sing hymn 680 in your blue hymnal, God Our Help in Ages Past.
Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which, for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. There once was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came along with them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, all that people have, they will give to save their lives. But spread out, stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the, word, the good at the hand of God? and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read together Psalm 26, responsibly by whole verse. It's found on page 616 in the Book of Common Prayer. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Trust me, O Lord, and find me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. But I will wash my hands in the innocence of the Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar. Sing aloud the song of thanksgiving, and recounting all your wonderful deeds. The Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory lies. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, warning against unbelief. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not see everything in subjection to them but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sacrifices and those who are sacrificed all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able as we sing together hymn 662.
according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But she, Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The gospel of the Lord. This past winter, or it may have been early spring, my wife and I were looking forward to a Friday off together. Our oldest daughter had school that day, so we got her up and dropped her off on time. And our younger daughter has daycare right now, so it's a little bit more flexible. But like any good parents with a shared weekday off, we took her right to daycare. <laughs> And we went looking for a bit of fun together, a, a date day, rather than a date night. The problem on this day was that it was cold and wet, rainy and about 40 degrees outside. So our usual options didn't seem so exciting. I remembered, however, that there was this town called Hot Springs, North Carolina, where supposedly there were natural hot springs like they have out west. I've been driving past it on the interstate since at least 2003 and never stopped. And I've talked to people who have gone, so I, I knew what kind of setup it was, but I had never been. Well, that day we drove about an hour or so up to Hot Springs, where we explored this beautiful little corner of western North Carolina. The Appalachian Trail goes through there. We had lunch there, we got some coffee. We enjoyed the hot springs overlooking the French Broad River, and then we made our way to Marshall, North Carolina, another small town with a beautiful main street, murals on the walls right along the river. It was a lovely day. As you probably know by now, the entire town of Hot Springs flooded last weekend. And the town of Marshall nearly got wiped off the map. 
The New York Times told the story of a 75-year-old man named Bruce Tipton who was swept away by the rising river and clung to a tree for six hours. The Swiftwater rescue team arrived but could not get to him safely. Though his German shepherd made it to shore, eventually his strength gave out and he washed away. A few weeks ago, on the last Friday before school started, we actually did keep our kids with us on that Friday for a family adventure, and we went kayaking down the Green River, 10 minutes away from here. We had the most beautiful time floating down that river. Our kids were so excited and glowing from it. All of these people were fighting their tubes, and we were in kayaks just loving it, swimming, doing the rope swing looking at the belted kingfishers as they rattled overhead. That gorge is destroyed. All of those homes and cars and people along that river, that road, it's gone. Swannanoa, Lake Lure, Chimney Rock and Bat Cave, many parts of Hendersonville and Asheville, were destroyed or flooded so badly that they may never be the same. At my house, we have an eight inch rain gauge and I emptied it three times in 18 hours. And it was overflowing every time. Hundreds of people died in this storm. Our neighbors, friends, teachers, store employees, restaurant owners and workers so many people lost or their lives changed forever. Some of you are in that situation very directly, and some of you are very close to it. And there are many of us who did fairly well in the storm. It was and it still is a huge inconvenience for us, but our homes did not flood. Our generators are still working or the power is back on and no trees landed on our houses. I am certainly in that situation. And yet there is an entirely real experience that we are going through being on the edge of such calamity and disaster. Why did we survive? How come we are having trouble sleeping at night? What if my generator breaks or my propane runs out? My kids wouldn't eat their breakfast and they don't understand that there wasn't any food in the stores. Life feels more fragile now because it is more fragile. We've all been touched by this. We are all going through a natural disaster. Do you think it's a coincidence that today is the first week of many in our Sunday lectionary in which we will be reading the book of Job? This month we are going to be forced to journey with Job and his family as they struggle with this question that people have asked since people were people. Why do bad things happen to good people? The book of Job says very clearly that Job is a completely righteous person, and yet he experiences so much loss and death and disease. Why would that happen? No one deserved to get hit by a flash flood that rolled cars like they were beach balls and crushed homes like aluminum cans. No one deserved this. Why did this happen? Why, God? Why? In the Bible, I believe there are three answers to this question. The first comes from what we might call the Deuteronomistic historian. Or you might say it comes from schools of thought that gave us books like Deuteronomy. And this way of thinking, if you do what God tells you, if you follow the rules, then God will bless you. You will prosper. You will live a long time and even have material wealth. And if you ignore God and are selfish and break the commandments, 
things will not go well for you. You will suffer. You will lose your land or your health or your family. It doesn't always say that God will cause you to suffer. Sometimes it's more of a warning. But it basically says that in this school of thought, you will reap what you sow. It's cause and effect thinking. It's a thinking that most of us live by, whether we want to admit it or not. You find evidence for that all throughout the Bible, especially in the first five books of the Old Testament, also in Proverbs and other places. I'm not sure how far that way of understanding suffering will get us in the aftermath of the destruction we've experienced. But it's worth wrestling with, and I would not dismiss it as easily as you may be inclined to dismiss it. The second way of thinking about the suffering that we are experiencing here in Western North Carolina at this time is found in other books of the Bible. So like I said two weeks ago, the Bible argues with itself at times. It offers different views of some hard questions that we face. In other books, like the book of Job, in Ecclesiastes, for example, suffering is presented as real and hard and terrible. They don't minimize it. These books don't make light of it. They present it as a hard and terrible reality of being a person. And basically, what they say is that we don't understand why Suffering happens. We cannot and will not understand why homes and families get washed away in rivers or cancer afflicts some and passes others by or trees fall on one house and miss another entirely. It's not for us to know, the book of Job will tell us. Ecclesiastes will say that there seems to be a season for everything under heaven. We will go through it, we will grieve it, we will try to love well as we hurt, but we don't know why. That is an honest answer unto itself. The third answer to this question is found in our reading from the book of Hebrews today which says, and I quote, It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. It's talking about Jesus. The third answer to the question of our suffering and loss and pain is Jesus Christ. In other words, we have a God who knew that some gesture was needed, some movement towards us, and our brokenness was needed, so that love and hope and healing could get a foothold in our hearts and in this world. But like this reading from Hebrews says, God chose to give us that foothold of grace not through power or might, but through coming to be with us in our pain, our loss, our suffering. In Christ, God suffers with you today. In Christ, God weeps with you today. In Christ, God is wounded with you. You are justified to respond in anger, but that doesn't answer the why. God's response as we scream that out, as we bleed, as we mourn, is to be here with us in Christ Jesus, whose suffering on the cross is God in complete solidarity with the world. As we scream out, God embraces us. And God calls us to this radical compassion where, like our Savior, 
we suffer with those who are hurting and afraid and hoping to rebuild. Remember, there is more to the story. Good Friday isn't the end. It might be Friday today, but Sunday will come. Remember that there is no tragedy which God cannot redeem. We are seeing that redemption roll out as we find space in our hearts for each other like never before. People are meeting neighbors. They're eating together. They're bringing food and gas to each other and living in solidarity with one another just as God is with us in Christ Jesus. There is no tragedy which God cannot redeem. And we get to share in that redemption. We get to join with Christ in order to share in the suffering of each other and in the healing of our people and this land. Here is what that looks like for us in this moment. We need this month, at least this month, to be about serving, recovering, and healing. That doesn't mean that we have to skip some of our previously planned things, but we need to be flexible and agile and patient with each other to figure out what we can and cannot manage while recovering takes priority. For example, I already canceled a wedding that was scheduled here for next weekend because it was simply too much. <coughs> One of the biggest ways you make a difference in ministry is through your staff. They are wanting to help with response, and indeed they already are. We are young, energized, and able to get a lot done at this time. We will need to be in and out of the office more than usual to do our jobs here and out there. See if you can help the staff as you ask the staff to help you this month. Mims, our parish administrator, who's here this morning with Max, is of no help to us if she does not have internet. And the office does not have it right now. So she needs to work from home until we have internet in the office. She also needs time to help with the response in Asheville, where she lives. We will need office angels at her desk starting tomorrow. Monday through Thursday, and likely for the rest of this month. So someone is in the office and can talk with people as they come in and hopefully answer the phones if they begin working. We will give you a stack of grocery gift cards in case people come in looking for help. You can sign up with her after the service, but understand that not everyone who signs up might get utilized. The clergy need to be able to help in the community and to know about pastoral needs in the church, especially related to the storm or other urgent matters. Father Ian and I can be in and out of the office all of next week, checking in at the desk. Mims, we're going to need you to put together a list of needs as they come in that we can share with this church community. Even if the list is short and changing constantly, we must make this our intention as Christians. I will meet with other Hendersonville clergy on Tuesday morning so we don't duplicate efforts. And Deacon Sandy can help with executing those on the ground and coordinating people to be involved. And let's include on that list where volunteers are needed each week. We need to have an emergency outreach committee meeting early this week, preferably tomorrow. I'll ask Jennifer Shelton to coordinate that meeting. Today, we will collect a special offering. And any time you want to give to it, anything in the plate today that is cash or designated as hurricane relief in the memo will go to help people in need here or in other places in this area. I'd also like to meet with the women's Bible study on Tuesday at their usual time. Is that 3.30? 3.30 in the library. Betsy, can you email them and invite the group to come and to check in and to pray together? And Catherine Witten, if you can be there for that too, that would be most helpful. 
Father Ian will meet with the men's group on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Zoom will likely not be available for those gatherings. The vestry will meet this Thursday at 5 p.m. in the library to conduct usual and storm-related business. We had a Holy Hikes retreat planned for Valley Crucis on October 20th. I'll be in touch with them to see if we can shift that to a service retreat because we know the Boone area was hit quite hard also. We may end up spending two days clearing trails, if nothing else, or we may not be able to go at all. And there will be more to come, more announcements, more emails to come. Now let me tell you one last story about how we respond in the face of such destruction and tragedy. In 1966, there was a terrible tragedy in a small Welsh mining village called Aberfan. Some of you will recall what happened there. After three weeks of heavy rain, the dam failed for a massive deposit of mining waste and sludge above this little working class town. Millions of pounds of material flowed downhill, crushing parts of the village, including the local elementary school, where 109 school children were killed. 144 people died in total on October 21st, 1966. In at least one telling of the story, Queen Elizabeth II was urged to go and visit, but for some reason, she did not or felt that she could not, so she sent her husband, Prince Philip, who attended the largest mass funeral for, for 81 children at one time. When he returned to his wife, the queen, who would go herself shortly thereafter, she asked how they could possibly cope with the tragedy they were going through. She asked him what, what did they do in the face of such loss? His answer was simply, they sang. They sang together. I invite you therefore at this time in the face of such difficulty and tragedy to sing this Welsh tune from Aberfan Jesus lover of my soul it's hymn 699 in your hymn hymn 699 please stand as we sing together
found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God from God. prayers for those who have suffered injury physically or emotionally as a result of the hurricane. Pray for all who are suffering. for those who are missing. God help them to find their way home and to be found. Pray for all who are missing. your prayers for those who are assisting with the recovery efforts, the first responders, the search and rescue teams, the linemen, the utility workers, those who are clearing trees and debris. Pray for all that are assisting in the recovery efforts.
I ask your prayers for the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for our country and all in authority. Pray for our nation. I ask your prayers for the welfare of the world. Pray for peace. Every year. I ask your prayers for God's guidance that he show us where and how we can help our neighbors through this transformative time. Give us patience in all things and a genuine love for all. Pray that we can truly be Jesus Christ's hands and feet in the days, weeks, and months to come. And finally, we give thanks for all that God has given us during this challenging time. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our name. The confession of sin can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, all our loose cash offerings and anything that you write in a memo for hurricane relief that get placed in the offering 
uh, will go towards helping people in this area and others that are affected by Hurricane Kelly. So thank you. Be generous if you can. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. She wanted to mention. Go ahead, Patricia. I just found out about this yesterday, and I hope most of you already know about it. But it's our federal government at work here. FEMA, uh, through through the county, uh, is going to do free debris removal. Um, if you don't know about this, this is a wonderful thing. Um, and there, it's not just the trees and the branches; it's other things too. If you have wet carpet, stuff like that. So I have about 10 copies of this. If you can get on the county, uh, Henderson County website, uh, it will tell a lot about it. But I have printed off 10 copies. So see me afterwards if you want more information. OK, thank you very much. And I helped a neighbor fill out the FEMA um, you know, uh, form yesterday uh, as well. So that's a resource for folks that have been uh, impacted. And, and uh, we're glad to try to help you with that as well. <coughs> at the church. We'll be in touch with other things uh, uh, in, the, in the days that are ahead. Uh, please stand and we will sing all 100 at this time.
with Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
standing or kneeling on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join us for a special coffee hour across the street in the wilderness room after this service so we can catch up more with one another and provide more support. Uh, to each other. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 358, Christ the Victorious.